I was uh, I was living in Rochester and ha- had no money. Just uh, I just got into radio and just out of college. And one of our friends, uh, he had a house. That he was working for like uh, the city, and it was one of these houses they used for like people that needed help, whatever. It was a huge house, but it was in the ghetto. So uh, this guy, he's like, "Hey, you guys want to live for free?" I'm like, yeah, you know, when you have no money, of course. Yeah. But it's in the ghetto. Like, yeah. I mean, in the ghetto. We were the only white people in this house. It was the scariest thing. The first night. You were scared for your life. You're just wondering if they're going to break in. I mean, Mm -hmm. you get that paranoia in your head. So we decided to throw, like, a a huge uh, keg party with the fraternity guys and the sorority girls and everyone from college. Oh, boy. And we're like, hey, come on to the ghetto, and uh, we're going to have a party. And it was pretty much all white people in this house, a couple, you know, black friends of ours, whatever, Yeah. in a really bad black ghetto neighborhood in Rochester. i got to remember the town. And, uh... Some of the guys were outside, and an all-out rumble happens. Oh, great. An all-out all out rumble. Can Blacks all against whites. I mean, the real deal, okay? And and we are just getting the shit kicked out of us. Of course you are. We are getting destroyed, because we're all hammered, and, and uh, you know, they thought it was a good idea just to go outside and, and smoke cigarettes and, you know, just be wise asses, because, you know, the, the fraternity mentality, you know? Yeah. But you're dealing with, like, like like real guys here, a real fraternity, okay? Hard, not a fake, pipe-hitting niggas. <laughs> not, a fake, not a fake fraternity where it, it revolves around, you know, drinking beer from a keg. Marshmallows. You know, when you're in the ghetto, they have the real fraternities, okay? You can't compete against that. So we're getting the ass kicked out of us. And uh, this guy, uh, Walt, comes running in the house and he goes, I will take care of the situation. Uh-oh. Uh, I mean, the cops aren't even around yet. I mean, I, I can't stress how bad this fight was. People are getting knocked out. It's just ugly, okay? You got knocked the fuck so, out. So you just brought back a memory. That's where I'm going with this. So Walt comes running back into the house. He goes, I will take care of the situation. We're like, what the fuck are you going to do? He goes, I'm going to call Crowbar. <laughs> ah. Well, when you can dial up Crowbar. Some guy named Crowbar was was going to come and uh, take care of the problem. You don't crowbar. get the nickname Crowbar to this by uh, doing uh, uh, nice things. To this day, uh, Crowbar never showed up, and I'm still wondering who the fuck is this Crowbar guy. Crowbar was probably busy. To the point where this guy, Walt, was so confident that one guy named Crowbar was going to take care of this huge race war going on outside our crowbar. stupid party. Crowbar. <laughs> crowbar. I'm calling Crowbar. <laughs> That's a great name. Oh, God. Maybe he meant I was, I'm calling Two Bar because he wanted to get red <laughs> on the <board. laughs> right. Red. Why, you yellow belly. I'm going to go get I'll cut Z's in your cheeks. Did you hear that the one guy, though, that the two guys, the two guys when he was getting hit with the bat?